Okay, so in this video, we will prove the divergence theorem, which states simply that if the individual terms of our series do not converge to zero as n tends to infinity, then the series simply diverges. We will not prove this result directly, but instead prove the equivalent result that states that if the series converges, then the individual terms must converge to zero as n tends to infinity. And again, this is simply known as the contrapositive of this statement. So we assume that the series converges. And what does it mean? Well, quite simply, again, convergence means that we can add these infinitely many terms, and the result is some real number. Suppose we call it L. So L is some real number. So as we keep adding more and more terms of our series, we are getting closer and closer to the actual answer L. So to prove the result that a n has to shrink to zero as n tends to infinity, we consider two partial sums of the infinite series. So let us first sum a n from 1 to uppercase n minus 1. So this will be a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3 all the way up to the final term when n is uppercase n minus 1, so a sub uppercase n minus 1. And again I will call this s sub uppercase n minus 1. The partial sum of the series up to the n minus 1th term. Let's now look at the other truncated sum, but now summing up to one additional term, so up to uppercase n. This will be a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus dot 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 plus a n minus 1 plus, and the last term when lowercase n is uppercase n, a sub uppercase n. And we will call this s subscript uppercase n, the partial sum of the infinite series where we truncate at the nth term of the series. Now in both cases, if we let n tend to infinity, then n tend to infinity, n minus 1 will also tend to infinity, so in both cases these will converge to the infinite series, so they will converge to L. So as n minus 1 converges to L, as n goes to infinity, and as n will also converge to L as uppercase n tends to infinity. And now the idea is to simply subtract from this partial sum this one. So we consider now s sub n minus s sub n minus 1. Well if you look, everything is common but the very last term. If you take all of s n and you subtract Sn minus 1, then you're removing all the terms from the sum except for the very last term, An. And now we simply have to let uppercase n tend to infinity. So as in this equality we are letting n tend to infinity, we know Sn converges to L. We know Sn minus 1 also converges to L. So the difference will converge to L minus L, which is simply zero. But both are equal. So if this side of the equality converges to zero, as n tends to infinity, then this side must also converge to zero, as n tends to infinity. But now, of course, we're done. The only difference between this statement and this one is that lowercase n has been replaced by uppercase n. So, of course, this is the same as saying that a n goes to zero as 
we are letting n tend to infinity, which is the same statement but written differently as saying, as we let n tend to infinity, a n converges to zero. So we have proved this result, and again, because the divergence theorem is simply the contrapositive of this result which we have just proved, it is equivalent, so proving this result automatically also proves the divergence theorem. And again, I want to emphasize here the intuition behind the divergence theorem. If the individual terms of the series do not shrink to zero as n tends to infinity, then they are too large, and so it is impossible to add these infinitely many, many real numbers, and so the corresponding series simply diverges. And the fact that the proof was rather short and intuitive also supports the fact that this is a very intuitive result. And that's it.